सो हाई एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम ए सी से दिशा चौहान अ प्राउड फिन ट्राम आई एम करेंटली अ ट्यूटर विद फिन ट्राम ग्लोबल एंड आई बिन टीचिंग फॉर पास फ्यू ईयर्स यू नो सब्जेक्ट्स लाइक बिजनेस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी कॉपरेट लॉ एंड फिनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस ऑफकोर्स आई हैव वर्क विद वेरियस बिग फोर्स इन द पास्ट इन ऑडिट एंड फिनेंशियल एडवाइजरी All right, so let's start with business and technology orientation. So, firstly, let's get into understanding about what exactly is business and technology subject all about. So, this subject is fairly, I would say, quite simple in terms of there's not a lot of things that you will have to remember, or there's something too difficult or technical about it. It is a theory exam. There's as such no practical. questions here it's a theory exam and if you are from a commerce background so in your 11th and 12th you would have studied business studies right if you're from cbse and you know 12 11th and 12th you would have studied business studied uh, studies so business and technology is basically you can say an amalgamation of your business studies and even economics that we studied back in our 11th and 12th right so in economics we studied micro and macro economics and that was a lot more in detail because we had an entire subject for that and of course there was a lot of you know Th- practical questions also in economics so here it's not in that much detail only the gist of it only about little bit of micro macro supply demand all of that is there uh you know hardly any questions i would say for supply demand also very basic question mostly this is a theoretical paper only and of course then there's business studies whatever you studied in business studies with regards to businesses and you know recruitment training development all of that all of those concepts you will be seeing here and of course in acc they have added this technology uh, part also because uh, you know future is technology every company these days no matter how small they are they have incorporated technology in some way or the other so acc that definitely that's why knows the importance of technology and that's why they've created the subject where in the subject will teach you that how exactly a business is going to operate uh, efficiently effectively and even ethically uh, you know ethics is a big part of acca uh, because as an accountant you have to be ethical so all of that is something you're going to be studying here so you will understand all of this in the context of the business environment at large you know whether it's your economic legal or regulatory influences that you could have you will learn about governance you know employment health safety data protection security uh, you know what exactly is a business you know what are stakeholders uh, what is an organization what are the different types of structures that an organization have and many other things so everything related to business your organizations your companies is something you will understand in this subject and of course in that technology aspect has been incorporated because acc knows that you know in the future almost every company nowadays is using technology so you know it is important for as to also understand that how technology can help and impact the businesses so coming to the syllabus area so these are the syllabus areas and if we go into each syllabus area in detail so starting off with the first one which is your business organization and organizational structure so this is a fairly simple one you know here firstly you'll understand exactly what can be termed as a business organization what are stakeholders you know there are different types of stakeholders internal external connected stakeholders all of that is something going to be taught in this session in this under syllabus area then you'll learn about organization structure now every organization will have a different type of structure small organizations would have maybe different structure large organizations need to have a certain type of structure so that is something you will see that what are the different structures what type of structure suits what type of organization then you will study marketing marketing again something which you would have studied back in your 11th and 12th business studies or even if you are in college and doing bcom you know marketing is something we have studied there also so you know your general four p's of marketing which are your product price place promotion all of that something you will be again touching upon very easy simple concepts nothing too technical too difficult just the basic concepts of your businesses then organization culture you know every organization has a type of a culture right 
which the top uh, you know personnel or management dictates so here you will uh, learn about what exactly is a culture in an organization how that culture could be affected by various factors that are there then of course you will learn about information technology and information systems in businesses that what are some you know technology or systems that businesses use uh, you know there are various things uh, various terminologies you will learn here but again nothing too difficult or technical something very basic then coming to the next syllabus area which is your syllabus area b wherein we will be uh, you know learning about the external environment and ethics now the external environment is something that you would have studied again in your you know economics so the political factors legal factors the economic factors and microeconomics is something that you will be learning here the technological factors that can affect the social factors what are the various competitive forces all of this is something we have studied in the past and again something that we will be studying and of course ethics like i said ethics is a very important part of acc this is the starting of ethics in every uh, subject almost uh, of acc at least at every level you would see ethics when you move to skill level you will see ethics in your audit paper when you move to professional level you will see ethics again in advance audit or in sbl so ethics is something which is very important and this concept as such will be seen even in the future in other subjects of acc also then part c of the syllabus area is your governance and social responsibility wherein you will understand what exactly is corporate governance you know which is basically how the organizations work or they are managed or control the social responsibility aspect so corporate social responsibility these days companies have responsibility whether it's towards the society or environment at large so many companies take up csr activities so you will learn about that what exactly is that what how companies can be socially responsible then coming to syllabus area d which is your accounting reporting systems and internal financial control so here you will learn a little more a uh, few technical things nothing difficult but you know till now we were just studying general business things here you will understand what is the role of accounting at large then about controls the internal controls that companies or organizations have in place to prevent or detect any fraud and error right so what is the security what is audit you will uh, here start off with the very basic of audit obviously this is not an audit paper only the basic that what is internal audit what is external audit then you will learn about identifying and preventing fraud how can one identify fraud what are the steps what are the some things that an organization do can do to prevent fraud right from as basic as segregation of duties right so if an organization if one person only has uh a uh, in is in charge of two three things that i am the one who's getting the invoice i am the one who's improve uh, approving it so there are chances that i could do fraud right but if i segregate this duty that one person is supposed to review it other person is going to approve it so then it could uh, prevent any fraud from happening so you know the various other tools and mechanisms that we have we'll be learning here then syllabus area e which is your leading and managing individuals and team wherein of course you learn about leadership what exactly is leadership who are called leaders ma about management what is supervision uh then the individuals groups that we have you know how is it working as individual different from working in as a group then you learn about motivation how do organizations motivate their employees then of course about training and development again training and development something which we have you know back in our school covered in 11th and 12th business studies also so same thing what is training you know you have on the job training off the job training all of that very basic things development what is the continuous professional development that needs to be done and all of that and the final syllabus area which is your syllabus area f which is about personal effectiveness and communication so here you learn about performance appraisal right companies you are working if you are working as an employee in a company at the end of the year a performance appraisal happens or maybe in 6 months or at the end of the year that how the person has performed you know their goals objectives are tracked along with their how they actually perform so something that we will be studying here what are the various performance appraisals personal effectiveness and communications what are the different types of communications that happen in an 
organizations a little bit of time management also is something that will be covered in this uh, syllabus area and of course that is something which would be useful uh, even in your life because time management skills are definitely important once you are you know studying for a professional exam like or a professional qualification like ACCA so these are the syllabus areas of business and technology and like i said nothing too difficult nothing very technical something that you would have already studied in your 11th and 12th but few more concepts might be added you know a little bit of technology part but again very simple uh in terms of uh nothing very difficult to understand or grasp of course the having said that that doesn't mean when i say it's simple that you don't have to study you have to study you have to study you have to work hard you have to complete all the syllabus areas you can't leave anything behind just thinking that oh this is simple or oh i have studied back in my 11th and 12th so i don't have to revise again you know because the exam pattern is of course different these are these are mcqs these are not uh, the general questions that we had back in 11 12 wherein we used to write answers for business studies right and in business studies what many students used to do that you, they used to do a lot of rote learning like ratta manna they used to do right but in acca uh, rote learning can't really take you any further road learning will not uh, help you to clear any exam because you have to apply all the concepts in a question the questions are in such form so that's why it's important that uh, while the subject is not so difficult when you compare to other subjects however it is still important and it is still important that you focus on it and give your 100% and treat it as if that it is a very important uh, part of your syllabus because whatever you study in business and technology all the knowledge is going to be carry forward when you reach your professional level and when you are giving your sbl is exam which is your strategic business leader so you know various concepts that you study in bt you will also see when you give your sbl exam you will see those concept popping up there so it is important that you study and you study in a way that you remember these things it's not that you just study and forget about it and then move on and that's why rote learning will not help you but understanding all of the concept and understanding all the various methodologies principles is important and of course uh, all the sessions have covered all of those uh, you know concepts and principles so that is nothing to be worried about so if you follow these sessions and if you follow you know the right approach which of course we will be discussing today then it will be fairly simple but if one just thinks that oh business uh, let's say you were very good at business studies and you feel that you know then this is going to be a cakewalk uh surely it will be simpler for you but that doesn't mean that you don't have to put in that effort or time so coming to the exam structure this is of course a two hour exam worth 100 marks so there are two sections there's going to be section a which will have your mcq questions now there will be 30 questions which will have uh will which will be worth two marks each and there will be 16 mcqs which will be for one mark each so the total of this section is 76 marks so majority is from section a and the remaining 24 marks is from your section b which is your multi-task question now what exactly is will be a multi-task question that in a question they will give some sort of a scenario very small scenario and in that they will give two three questions right and the, those questions could either be a form of mcq or match the following or little like fill in the blank something on those lines so multitask questions you will have six questions and each are going to be worth four marks uh, each and of course uh, in our video question marathon that we have at fintram global we have designed it in a way that we have made it in section a and section b where in section a we are solving many mcqs you know more than 100 mcqs we are solving from all of these various syllabus areas which includes your concept based questions past exam questions and then we have section b questions also which we are solving in the section b part of the video question marathon so all of these questions have been you know solved uh, at the video question marathon but again it is important that once you watch those um, you know marathon sessions that you also on your own solve and of course with when you watch any session after a session there are also some mcqs or questions there after every session so those questions are also there so that you know you are able to see that okay whatever you learned are you able to answer or apply it back 
so here are some tips for answering the mcqs now these are generally the same for at least all of the knowledge level subjects i would say because you know in your knowledge level it is mostly form of mcqs and mtq so what are those tips firstly that you need to read the question thoroughly it is very important that once you read any question you are firstly focusing on that question and not thinking at that point about anything else or that okay how much time is left and all of that once you are reading a question you should just focus on reading that question because any amount of time that you uh, waste on thinking on something else you will be again then putting a lot of time in reading the question again and again so just read it thoroughly at least the first time only so that you don't have to waste then time on reading again and again think before answering don't rush again a very uh, important point which i always tell my students that what happens is you would read a question and let's say it's regarding four p's of marketing and you read it you think oh i uh, it's very simple topic i know it and you are just you read the second option and you feel oh this is the answer and you just answer it you don't even go through the other options so never do that even if you are very confident at least go through all the options think before you answer and do not rush don't think that oh uh, you might be thinking that oh i have done the similar sort of a question in uh, practicing while i was practicing question so this is the answer so it's important that you read it carefully it may not necessarily be the same question but look like a same question so think before you are answering you should not rush uh, while you should not rush that doesn't mean that you waste a lot of time in just uh, one particular question so you know you should take just the ample amount of time that you need to you can't really give put a 4 to 5 minutes on one mcq because then you will definitely not be able to finish your exam then at times it could happen that maybe you are not good at some topic or a little difficult question has come and you are not able to you know you are not able to guess the answer or you are not able to manage to know the answer so maybe none of the options that are there um you know there are four options in an mcq they have given you and you are not able to match your answer with any of that so in that case what should you be doing you firstly need to reread the question to understand that you are actually understanding what they are asking maybe you misread something right and because of that you are not able to get the answer so firstly try to do that after that you should eliminate any obviously wrong answers in many questions there are going to be some uh, you know pointers some options which are definitely you know absolutely wrong and by looking at it you will understand that oh, this definitely can't be the answer or option so that you can easily eliminate then whatever is remaining in that you can select the most likely one that you feel could be the option but after doing all of that if you are still unsure then you just make a note that okay i need to come back to this question and you continue to the next question you can't wait uh, waste a lot of time on one particular question because you have you know the entire exam to finish then at the end once you're done with all the questions um whatever questions you were not able to answer then you should revisit them after you've completed the entire paper and then try to target them with a fresh set of eyes and again a very important point which i always tell the students is that you need to answer all of the questions even if you are unsure of the answer there is no negative marking in acc exam so if you don't know the answer of a particular question don't just leave it thinking that oh i don't know this just click on any option write out any answer and submit it because it might be right right you have taken a guess it could come right so it is important that you answer all questions if you know very less time is left and let's say you are uh, you know you are doing your paper and five six questions are still remaining like you have not even seen it for the any first time also and uh, time is about time is about to go off so you know instead of just leaving it just click on any options and submit it so that maybe by chance you know one one or other could get right and there is no negative marking if there was negative marking surely we wouldn't have done this but since there is no negative marking it is always a good practice to at least put any option as the answer so try to answer all the questions and you know manage time effectively that you are able to complete the paper on time and still have few minutes left to visit those questions which you have not answered and all of that so time management will of course come with practice when you have a good 
planned out schedule when you practice daily when you practice with a timer all of these things will help you to manage your time effectively so let's talk about the approach to preparation how should you prepare how should you start your preparation so if you have you know decided that okay i have to give bt exam what should be your steps your first thing that you need to do is firstly decide when you want to give the exam because these are on demand exams there is no timetable given by acc right timetable comes for acc uh, exams only for your skill and professional levels which are your four sittings that you can give in a year and they will tell you this date is the exam but that's not the case for knowledge level and the law paper so for these papers these are on demand exam you can appear you know any time of the year so you have to decide but because if you don't decide and you just think oh i will give the exam let's say in two months time and you are just studying and you by, by the end of the two months by the end of the two months you are going to realize that you have more than half of syllabus area left because you didn't have a plan in place so decide from now so it's april now and if you decide let's say you are going to give it in june for example you could give it in may end or you could give it in june whatever uh, you decide so then you have to work backwards so if you decide okay i'll give the exam on 15th june then you work backwards that by this date i should complete my entire syllabus by this date my revision needs to be completed by this date i will give a mock exam and by this date i will again do a final revision and then give my exam of course in between there could be a few things that are unpredictable right maybe you got sick and because of that one week got wasted so all of that is different so you need to keep a buffer time also but all in all at least decide on a date and then work towards it work backwards that how exactly you will achieve uh, you know your entire thing to give your exam on that date also select a date when there are not any other commitments because if you have let's say your college exams in june uh, then of course don't give during that time because these are on demand exams you have the choice to give this exam on whichever date you want to so at least select a time period where at least you don't have any pressure from if you are in school from your school or if you are in college from your college or if you are a working professional then from your office when you can get leaves so you have to think of all of that and then finalize a date once you finalize a date the first step that you need to do is creating a study plan now creating a study plan is very important and not just creating it following it so you have to create a study plan you have to decide that okay in a week i will complete let's say three chapters or i'll complete five chapters depending of course on your other commitments maybe you have college going on you have college projects going on so depending on all of that you will have to plan on yourself that how much i can you know as i can dedicate so mondays let's say you have very busy so you will say okay i can only study one hour on monday tuesdays let's say you have uh, only three four classes on your college so you have a free time so you say i'll study two hours on tuesday similarly saturday sundays maybe you have more time so you'll decide okay i'll study six hours on saturday or five hours on saturday and five hours on sunday so this is how you will have to create a study plan and timetable and this is very important uh don't think that oh i'll just you know do it as it goes by whenever i find time because then you will never find time until and unless you jot down that this day i will study this much for these many hours and then you have to track it at the end of every week you need to track how are you going as per your study plan if your study plan said that in week 1 you were supposed to complete four chapters practice these many questions and revise those four chapters and if you have just done two chapters that means you are not able to do it maybe you are setting unrealistic goals or maybe the goals are realistic but you are not putting in that effort you are not putting in those hours that you needed to so then you have to check and accordingly amend the study plan that okay this week i didn't do so at least in week 2 i'll push more so all of that is something that you have to do acc is a professional qualification someone who is pursuing this has to has that drive you know your parents can't force you to study your uh, tutors are only there to guide you and support you but they can't force you to study right you are the only one who can push yourself to study and you have to do it on your own if you want to become an acca you have to have that drive that okay i have to study today no one else is going to tell you this because 10th boards 12th boards were different our parents were after us so maybe we did that back then but if acc a professional qualification is something that you want to pursue then 
it's not like your parents can push you or anyone else you have to do it on your own so that's why it's very important that you create a study plan you follow that study plan and you measure your uh, performance as per the study plan that are you able to achieve the goals that you have set for every week and similarly once you achieve those goals you should reward yourself so if in sunday if you feel that you have you know done really good you had to do four sub uh, chapters and you had to do this much revision these many questions and if you have done all that then reward yourself on sunday you whatever you like you could go out for a movie or go out with friends whatever is it so you reward yourself also in between nobody is saying you just study but at the same time have a balanced life once you are studying you should only be studying then your mobile phones needs to go off you know you can't be on social media at that time looking at reels or youtube at that time your focus should only be studying so if you decide one hour only i'll study a day that's fine but at least in that one hour you should only be studying and not looking at anything else not looking at your phone not looking at tv not looking or talking to someone just study during that time so that is something that you have to do it yourself you have to push yourself to do that step 2 is of course completing the entire syllabus there is no cherry picking in any of the acca exams you can't decide that oh i don't like this topic so i will not study this doesn't matter maybe it will not come in the exam anything and everything can come in the exam whichever thing is mentioned in the syllabus so you have to that's why complete the entire syllabus that is there complete all the sessions and complete everything you can't leave anything out just because you don't like it because like i said anything could come up in the exam step 3 is practicing questions now you know business and technology like i said is a theory paper as such so many students feel that why do we need to practice questions you know it's just theory i'll understand the concepts and i'm done if you do that you will fail in the exam practicing questions is very very important you know because when you practice questions only then you understand that okay these type of questions can come in the exam these are the things or the requirements that the examiner has so practicing question whether it's a theory paper or practical paper or a mix of both you need to do that with your own hands once you're done with the questions you need to practice again and again you know it doesn't matter which uh, book as such you are following which uh, publisher you are following all i would I'll always tell my students whichever you follow you know fintram provides their own notes which are actually more than enough technically you don't need to go beyond that but if you want to go beyond that i will never stop any student yes you can you can then follow any other book whether it's kaplan bpp to practice more and more questions but whatever you following that do questions from that practice questions then whether you're just following our uh, you know material which is more than enough so just practice again and again you know once you're done with the question marathon questions don't then just think that oh i'm done so you know it's good to go practice again all of those questions practice on your own i see so many students watching the video question marathons and then they just watch it and they think that okay ma'am solved all the questions i understood it done no you when you're watching it simultaneously you have to solve it on your own only then you are able to you know grasp everything and not only that only then you will be able to manage time effectively if you just look at it and feel oh i'm understanding everything that's not enough you have to practice on your own and only then your time management will also improve step 5 is of course watch the revision session at least two times so the revision sessions that we have you know it is uh, basically all the concepts that we have studied in the various sessions all of them are being revised again in this revision session so before the exam you watch the revision session once you would have watched once you're done with when you're watching all the sessions and again before the exam i will suggest definitely watch the revision session at least step 6 is you must also watch the video question marathon at least twice yes you watch it once you do questions along with it then maybe a few days later you just do questions on your own and then maybe in the end you once again watch the video question marathon just to be sure step 7 is of course giving a mock exam now there are so many times uh, even though we tell this to our students almost every time that definitely give a mock exam still students will not give a mock exam thinking that you know i have practiced enough or this is a theory paper why do i need to give a mock exam giving a mock exam is important because of the main aspect i would say is time management 
you know once you are practicing question when you watch session you practice question you are not really looking at the clock you might take maybe you're taking 3 4 minutes for an mcq which is a lot of time you can't really take that much time so that's why giving a mock exams and even when you're practicing questions practicing with a timer is very important when you are giving a mock exam make sure you are actually giving it in those conditions that is it is a 2 hour exam so make sure you are only taking 2 hours if you are taking 3 hours and giving the mock exam then there is no point of giving the mock exam so once you decide that okay today i'll give my mock exam or tomorrow you decide that okay tomorrow i'm going to give my mock exam so you write to the fintram team they provide you with the mock paper and then you decide that okay this time maybe evening 5 to 7 i'll give mock exam so you sit in your room shut the door keep your phone out just put a timer on and you give the mock exam for those 2 hours right and when you're giving the mock exam there should not be anyone coming and disturbing you your parents should not be coming and disturbing you you should not be looking at your phone at that time you should not be opening books at that time because this is not an open book exam right that time you need to give a exam thinking that okay you are actually giving a exam in reality so that's why giving a mock exam is important because once you do the mock exam there are so many students who realize that oh they were not able to complete 20% of the paper 30% of the paper then they go back practicing more and then they give another mock or they give that same mock and they realize that this time they were able to uh, you know give uh, their 100% and they were able to give the 100% exam on time so that's why giving a mock exam is important and not just during the mock exam but before that also when you're practicing questions you know uh, when you're doing the video question marathon keep a timer on time yourself that in an mcq how much time you're taking you should ideally you should not take more than 1.8 minutes when you divide the marks and the time limit that we have so this see all of that that how much time you're taking all of that you need to keep a track on because only then you will be able to manage your time effectively because if you don't do that then there are you know chances that maybe you are able to only attend 70% of the exam so from 70% gaining 50% then could be little difficult because the pass, uh, passing marks is 50% uh, right so that's why it's important that whenever you are practicing questions also you have a timer on you are seeing okay this much time i am taking to solve a question maybe in some syllabus areas or some topics you are not too sure about and you are taking more time so you then you need to study that again practice that again so that is very important step 8 is of course attending your exam right you uh, like i said you would have booked your session uh, whichever date you would have decided and once you are done with your preparation you have given your mock exam you are happy with your score and you feel okay i don't need to practice more uh, i scored decent in my mock i'll just do one more revision and one more time video coach amount on practice and finally give my exam now when you attend your exam before your exam date whatever is your exam days two weeks before your exams are very crucial in terms of not only what you're studying or practicing but your health also if you fall sick during that time and let's say you are down maybe with fever or any flu and you have exam let's say in 4 to 5 days then there are chances that your performance are going to be is not going to be up to the mark right because when we are sick of course our body gets tired we get tired easily we are not able to think so much and during the exam you need to be 100% fit so that's why two weeks prior to the exam make sure you're not eating out as such you're not eating from outside um, maybe avoid cold things like ice cream so that you don't get a throat infection or anything like that make sure you're sleeping on time eating right eating healthy and getting up on time so that your body cycle is good and you are maybe let's say exercising if you play a sport great if you don't exercise as such maybe just do a 30 minute walk whenever you are done from studying or bored from studying you know take a 30 minute walk listen to some music you will feel refreshed so do all of that because two weeks before the exam you can't afford to be sick because if you get sick then again your exam is going to get affected and nobody wants to you know everyone wants to of course clear the exam in first attempt right nobody wants to go through that again just because you were sick in any other case let's say you were not able to clear the exam it's still okay because it's fine it's not the end of your life i always tell the student if you in case don't clear the exam even after doing all of these steps if you don't clear do because you let's say didn't study or didn't practice questions then it's on you but even after doing all of this if you don't clear it's fine maybe something somewhere went wrong 
and you of course can appear for the exam again you know there is no problem in that so you should not get disheartened uh, once you don't clear and if you follow these steps however diligently and really have a study plan in place you focus on completing the entire syllabus areas on time you practice a lot of questions with timer you revise you give a mock exam then there are chances that you should actually clear the exam unless of course you fall sick or anything like that so that's why it's important to take care of your health also and not just for this exam in general whenever you're giving for exam whether it's your acc exams or college exams you know these things should be kept in mind these things actually can be impl implemented when you're giving your college exams also right for that also you should always have a study plan in place you should uh, you know practice a lot of questions and even in colleges and schools we used to have those exams right in between uh, where in uh, practice exam or test so similarly we have mock exams here so that's why it's important and it is important that you are focusing on time management acc exams are very important from the perspective of time management many students who know the syllabus who have studied everything everything is done by them but they don't focus on time management they don't practice enough questions they don't practice with a timer they don't give mock exam and because of that then they are unable to clear the exam because they think time management is not that such a big thing they have given exams in the past but this is different this is not your general exam that you can ask your teacher that ma'am five more minutes and they are going to give you any more time you have to attempt that 100 marks in those two hours so make sure that's why you are focusing on time management and whenever you are practicing questions you are practicing with that timer you are looking at the clock you should not be taking a lot of time in solving questions and it is very important all right so this was the approach to preparation and i would suggest every student to follow this approach you know definitely once you have decided that you are that you are going to be appearing for the exam make a study plan decide on the date firstly and then work backwards make a study plan and then work towards that date and keep all of these points in mind so now if you have any questions let me know thank you for joining in now this is the number which you can contact uh, fintram global if you have any other queries with regards to you know the sessions you know you can either visit our website and take the sessions and uh, or you could visit the website to know more about acc also and you could call on this number and apart from that if there are any other questions uh, you can let me know thanks have a great time so if there are any questions or queries you can ask here in the chat box or if there's anything related to as such uh, you know acc or anything then you can also get in touch with fintram team they're always happy to help you so this is the contact number and the website which you could visit so you can take a note of that so if there are any other questions feel free to put it in the chat box otherwise we could end the session all are clear okay great omendra all right omendra has no questions yes if you have any other questions please put it in the chat box otherwise we shall end the session no ma'am thank you all right since you both have no questions no one has any questions i will then end the session all the best and like i said uh focus on making a study plan and also of course following it and before the exam two weeks before the exam are crucial take care of your health also and you know practice questions and focus a lot on time management all right thank you everyone for joining in have a great sunday this is disha chauhan signing off